learn and evolve. And that 25 step process is, is now 127 steps. So what we're going to do is try and boil that down for you to give you a simple roadmap in this um, guide that I'm going to give you access to at the end. Um, before I get into letting you know about me, and Nancy did a really great job of introducing you, introducing me to you, um, one of the things I'd like you to know about this presentation is um, that it is actually, in one hour, I'm going to take you through so much stuff, your head's going to spin a little bit. Like I said, this is all content, this is no selling, um, but we do a, an annual event, usually in California, in the fall, and all of the stuff that we do in the first day of that pro, that two-day event is now boiled down into this one-hour presentation. So we've got a lot to cover and you'll have some questions and like I said we're going to try and get down to the questions um, in the end but we're going to try and move through this very quickly. So about me, um, my company is Crescendo Publishing. We are a boutique style publishing company that works only with entrepreneur authors. I like to call this group of people authorpreneurs. These are people who are coaches, consultants, um, business people, people who are established in their business. Um, we have a running joke within our company where you know we talk to people about publishing all the time and people on my team say, oh no, Robin only does specific things. We don't do children's books, memoirs, and vampire romance novels. So we're really clear on who we work with and that's how we've been able to be successful in growing Crescendo Publishing, but more than that, how we've been able to make our authors successful. So for me, I published two books. Um, the first book I published, really I was trying to help friends of mine who were holistic practitioners, the Holistic Health and Wellness Entrepreneurs, Handbook for Success. I published that basically putting a bunch of marketing information together for friends who are holistic practitioners and in doing that I thought you know what the heck why don't I just put this on Amazon and see what it does. So I documented the process that I went through to publish that and I published it and I did a launch and you know what it did absolutely nothing. It was a total failure <laughs> in terms of launching. And that just presented a whole other um, set of challenges for me because I, I'm not, I don't take to failure very well, but out of failure, we find growth. So I did a lot more, um, and this was before I even created Crescendo Publishing. So I did a lot more um, investigation on internet marketing, um, launches, and, and things like that. And then I published ebook publishing power for entrepreneurs as a test to find out if what I really had learned was true and you know you never want to test on clients so I tested on myself and it was number one the first day on Amazon that we that we released it and since then in evolving my processes I've been able to make it a number one bestseller multiple times so we do all of our testing you know on my own stuff before we roll it out to clients Additionally, we have a podcast on iTunes called the Authorpreneur Spotlight where we interview a number of our, um, all of our authors that we actually publish, um, as well as industry experts. So that's a little bit about me and what we do. Um, here are some of our books that we've published, um, some really great authors that we've worked with. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see, you'll see our Instant Insights series. These are books that we actually just launched a year ago, and these are short read books. This is my brand, the Instant Insight series, but other authors' content. Sort of like a combination between um, um, the Harvard Business Review Guides, those little books that you see in, in airports, and um, the, the For Dummies series. So they're all pretty much branded the same, but they're short reads, and we get them out and published, written and published in about 60 days. So that's a great alternative for people who um, don't have the time or want to make a, a huge investment in writing their own books and taking the time to do that. So that's about us, what we do. So what do you say? Let's do this. So let's start with the five essential elements for creating global visibility and positioning yourself as an expert in your field. So the first thing is, is that you need to have a next step for a reader 
um, to get them to your website, to visit your website, or to get a reader to take. So this is, you know, you want to, if you're going to publish a book, you want them to be able to take a next step. The one thing that breaks my heart the most is to watch an author toil and stress over writing a book forever, finally publish it, and then not have the reader have something for the reader to do next. That is a total waste of all of your energy and promotional value as well. We do a great job of um, you know producing and then launching books for our clients, but if the you know and creating a whole bunch of momentum around the launch and a whole bunch of hype. But if there's nothing for the reader to do next, then you've lost a huge opportunity and potential sales. The next thing that you want to do for positioning yourself as an expert is get out there and speak. You know, having a book is probably the number one thing that will get you on stages to, to do speaking and grow your business. And it's been well documented that um, the number one way to grow your business is through speaking on stages. And it doesn't have to be a stage, it can even be on a webinar such as this, it could be telesummits. But it, the book really does get you visibility into getting speaking engagements. And speaking engagements are you know, definitely something that will help grow your business and grow your visibility globally. Again, the other thing too is to write and publish your own book so that you can do all of these things. Right? It's, the book is what creates the visibility in the first place. Um, and I'm going to, when we get down to the, um, when we talk about what's going in the market space, what you'll realize is that Amazon is a huge platform for people to get visibility, unlike any other. There's a lot of noise in the world, and if somebody is really searching for an expert, they're going to look for someone who's published a book. So Amazon, you know, Amazon is in, I think, 31 different countries around the world. It gives you a global platform to be recognized on and get your work out into the hands of people who need to read it. The other thing is a web presence. If you want to be known globally, you absolutely need to have some type of web presence. Um, and this could be a simple web page. It doesn't have to be a full blown out 15-page um, website. But nowadays, websites are more probably more important than having a business card. The first, and I don't know about you guys, but the first thing that I do if I'm going to think about working with somebody, there's actually two things. The first thing is, is I go and I Google them, see if they have a website, and I want to check out their website. Do they have a professional website um, done? If I can't find them, then I got to wonder about their credibility. The second thing is a social media platform. That's the other thing that I look for. And that's the, the fifth thing that you need to really think about growing and spending time on nurturing and, um, and getting, and getting, getting, and getting, and building. I can tell you that, you know, I have people that come to me and say, you know, I want to be picked up by a, a, a traditional publishing company. The very first thing that a publishing company will look at is your social media platform before they will take you on as an author, if they do. Um, but that's a whole other webinar altogether. Um, so you need to think about the size of your social media platform. And this is really all about gaining followers. It's not about spending time on Facebook watching videos of, you know, people's kids and cats and stuff like that. You know, it's about consistent posting and building your following. So those are the five things that you really need to focus on when it comes to um, building a web, sorry, building a global presence. The next thing I want to take you through, because this will all come together in the end and you'll see where, where it all kind of fits together into pieces of a puzzle, but we'll go through the five critical self steps in self-publishing for entrepreneurs specifically, because this is a very different process than if you were publishing a children's book, a memoir, or a vampire romance novel. Definitely different genres and different processes that you want to go through. So in doing this, we kind of boiled it down to five critical and, you know, I want to say easy steps, but there are many different moving parts into five of these steps. The first is writing your book, obviously. Um, there are structures to writing a book that's built specifically for lead generation. 
and we're going to go through that in a second. The next is preparing your book. And with this, what we mean, what I'm talking about is, you know, really the structure around what goes into it and how it's all, how it's all laid out. Then it's, there's the publishing process. Um, you know, some people think that they can get away with just publishing an ebook, but the reality is that you, to get on stages, to really be seen as a true expert and legitimate in your field, you really need to publish both a print book and an ebook. And what's starting to happen is people are really requiring, um, readers are really wanting to see the audiobook as well. So that's starting to evolve as well. So it's really determining the publishing platforms that you're, you're working with them. The next step is promoting. This is a really complex um, step in the process. It can go really good or it can go really bad. But you know, when I talked about um, building your social media, um, platform that is critical to the promotion of any book and the success of any book is utilizing that social media so there are a number of different ways um, to promote your book for six for entrepreneurs to be successful the next is profiting this is the one piece that entrepreneurs seem to miss the most is monetizing their book so when we talk about this whole process, writing, preparing, publishing, promoting, profiting and monetizing is the piece where the authors tend to fall down. There are so many different ways that you can make money from your book outside of book sales that you should actually be making more money from products and services that you offer as a result of the book than from book sales. Any author that we talk to or prospective author that comes to me and, and you know, we sit down and we talk about their book and working together, the first question I ask them is, you know, what is the purpose behind publishing your book? And I've had people say to me, you know, I just want to be an author and I want to make money selling books. These are people that I choose not to work with and I refer them to other publishers because I don't, I don't believe that they're the true um, return on your investment is in book sales. The true return on your investment are from the clients that you'll get as a result of publishing your book. The book sales are nice and don't get me wrong, it's really cool to have Amazon deposit those little piece, chunks of money into your bank account every month. But um, you know, that's just icing on the cake. So those are our five steps. So let's talk about them in a little bit more detail. So with writing your book, the fact is that most people never cross the finish line. And the majority of people that I talk to, you know, in the introduction phase when we're first starting to figure out if we're going to work together, they've been trying to do this for years. You know, they've got a dream of publishing a book. They started writing it years and years ago, or they just never really got it off the ground. Um, and, and that's the unfortunate reality. Um, and I think that's why people actually come to work with us. Our typical turnaround time is idea to published and online in under six months because we have a process and we work through this with our clients. Um, what you have to realize though is it doesn't have to take you years or even months. If you have a solid foundation, which we actually work with our clients at the very beginning to do that. Um, you know, we start off spending a half a day with our clients to, um, I do it personally, to map out and structure your entire book and then, and then give you support every single week. We have calls with our clients, but it doesn't have to take you years. It can take you, you know, a few weeks. It can take you a few months as long as you have the right support. It also doesn't have to be thousands of pages, right? So we did a number of surveys and gathered some industry data. And what we found was that, for books that are entrepreneurially driven, nonfiction books, books written by coaches and consultants um, to promote their businesses, the real sweet spot is around 150, 180 pages. What that means is about, it really, when you're writing your book, you've got to remember you're writing in a Word document, which is very different from a six by nine printed book. So you should be looking at word count when you're doing your writing versus what is your Microsoft Word page count telling you. So the sweet spot that we stay within that our feedback tells us is, is the best 
is between 127,000 words and 133,000 words. That gives you about 180 pages in a six by nine book. What people have said is that anything less and it feels like it's a pamphlet, anything more and it feels like it's just visually too daunting to even finish. So just realize it doesn't have to be thousands of pages. Your book can be written and published quicker than you think and getting the right support, right? Like I said, most people don't cross the finish line because they're not getting support. And it doesn't have to be from someone like something like working with me. It could simply be, you know, joining a writing group. Um, there are Facebook groups for writers. There, you know, having a writing partner, um, an accountability buddy, um, someone in your family just keeping you accountable to writing. Next, we're going to talk about preparing your book. Now, like I mentioned earlier, books that are structured, structured specifically for lead generation they actually create a relationship with the reader and that's what you're looking to do. It follows this kind of lead generation um, structure. It follows a professional book structure. With that, we're looking at how there are three essential elements within a, a professional book structure. There's the front matter, which is everything before the table of contents. Then there's your body, which is all of your content. And then there's the back matter, which is everything that happens after the end. You know, and there are critical elements within both the front matter and the back matter that you really need to include um, for this to be presented as a professional book product. Um, lead generation books also include a call to action. It's that next step that we want the reader to take to get them from the book to your website. And I'm going to show you some examples of this as we get further into the presentation. It's also interactive, you know, um, there, you might include things like videos and audios and, you know, just simple questions throughout the book. But more than anything, it really, what a, a lead generation book does is it positions a problem and provides a solution. A reader wants to find themselves within the book. They want to say, you know, they want to say to themselves, wow, that's me. Right? I see myself and what that author is writing about. And then later, as you're going through the book, they, the reader wants to say, well, okay, there's a solution. I find, you know, I've got this pain and now you're providing me with a solution. I see an end to my problem. So that's a structure that you really want to include. These are elements that you want to include in a book that's built specifically for lead generation. You also want to provide social proof. So as I mentioned, you know, position a problem, provide a solution, and then add some social proof. And with this, what I'm talking about is add a case study or a story, a client story, so that the reader can make the connection, right? They can see themselves in the, per in the problem, see the outcome that your client or your case study had so that they can say, wow, I can do that too. All right. So, I'm going to go through this one really quickly because we just actually talked about it. A chapter, you know, this is how you should really structure your each individual chapter. Provide a problem, provide a solution, and then offer your social proof or your case study. Each chapter can be structured that way. I would also add at the end of that, if you can at the end of each chapter, add a few bullet points so that you're bringing it all home for them and you can just add a couple of salient points that they can have as key takeaways, which is the recap. All right. You also want to include a call to action in some chapters, not all of them. What this might look like is, um, you know, you could say something like to help you put in place the, or help you um, navigate through what I've just talked about and get results. Um, I've included a downloadable PDF for you to see here. And then you'll drive them to the um, to your website to download it and um, let me just go back to download that and uh, now they're on your mailing list. Another call to action could be a journaling exercise where you're asking them to write some things out or to reflect on something. But having some kind of a call to action that gives them pause to think about what's happened in that chapter is always a good thing. All right, now we're going on to publishing your book. 
fact is that traditional publishing can take up to 18 months or longer to reach the market and requires an established platform. We talked about that, having an established social media platform. Speed to market. By self-publishing your book, you can have your book out, like I said, we do some books we put out there in as little as 60 days. So by self-publishing your book, or working with a, you know, a hybrid publisher like someone like Crescendo Publishing, you should be able to put your book out into the market space faster. It provides, by self-publishing your book, it also provides flexibility. When you publish with a traditional publisher, um, that's it. Basically, you sign over intellectual property rights and you have no control over the book. You have no control over pricing, title, um, book covers, um, editing, anything like that. I had uh, an author that we published two years ago and she decided that she wanted to update some of the, um, the, thing, the content within the book because there was um, a really relevant case study she wanted to include. But the, the overall content for the book was solid, but she just wanted to add in a case study. We were able then to go in and, and add an extra chapter in on the fly and it was republished within about two days. So you have that, that flexibility with self-publishing. You also get higher royalties when you self-publish. Um, to give you an example, you know, Jack Canfield talks about this all the time. Had he have known then what he knows now, he never would have sold the, the chicken soup franchise to his publisher. They, publishers make about a dollar, sorry, when you publish um, traditionally, um, you make about a dollar a book. Our authors typically make anywhere on their print books, they typically make around $8 a book, depending on where you price it. On their ebooks, they typically make about $3 a book. And that's significant. It's a significant difference. Again, you also have more control over your intellectual property. Um, when, you sign, when you work with a traditional publisher, you sign over your rights. So let's think about this for a second. You've created a system for, um, for let's say, um, training back office staff in a dental practice, and it's your proprietary system, and you publish it with a traditional publisher. Well, they'll take your intellectual property rights. So now you cannot um, create your own programs or services, well services is fine, but you can't create your own workshops or programs using the content from that book because they now own your intellectual property rights. That's why I got into this business, to be honest with you, because I saw too much of this happening. And as an entrepreneur, your intellectual property is, is your entire business. And to sell it to someone who, you know, they're only going to ride the wave of the popularity for maybe a year and make money off that book as a traditional publisher, that's your bread and butter for your entire life. So if you take nothing more away from this webinar, this is the one thing I want you to take away. If you go with a, sell, with a traditional publisher, don't ever sign away your intellectual property rights. All right, so moving on, after I've just ranted, um, promoting your book. So the key to, best, to becoming a best-selling author is clearly promotion. Amazon provides a number of tools to help you achieve this. They have a number of programs which we actually utilize um, when we do bestseller campaigns, and they're fantastic for getting huge amounts of downloads, um, increasing your book sales, and everything that you need to become a bestseller. Social media has become a game changer. And we utilize 85 different social media groups that we belong to to run bestseller campaigns. Um, some of them we pay to belong to, some of them we don't. But you know, definitely social media needs to be fully utilized when running a bestseller campaign. You need to also leverage your communities. Communities are key. You know, reaching out to people who you know, support you, who love you, organizations that you're a part of, um, Create um, joint ventures with people, um, referral partners, things like that. And then the key is have a plan and execute it. Don't ever go into any kind of launch, whether it's a book launch or a program launch, without first having a plan and work your plan, right? Have all of your mechanisms in place. We have a whole team that does this. It doesn't, it's not just me. Who do, I could never just do this on my own. You know, it takes, it takes a village to launch a book successfully. So the key is to really create a plan 
and then execute the plan step by step. All right, so getting attention for your book. Well, when you're doing the promotion, there are different ways that you can get attention. One of them is through giving it away. Um, you know, we talked a, a little bit about making money from for your book sales versus making money out of sales as a result of. You know, you should be thinking about your book as a business card, right? It's an expensive business card, yes, but you know, the reality is your wholesale cost for a book is probably going to be about three dollars. So, you know, it's it's a worthwhile investment to give, and you can give away the ebook if you don't want to give away free books. But it's really all about you know getting your work out there as much as possible. Amazon offers a free days promotion where you're able to give away your ebook for free for a total of five days every three months. So that's one program that you can utilize. When you're speaking, you can give away books from the stage. You can also set up um, a process where you can have people uh, opt in to, uh, to your website and you can send them a copy of your book that will build your list and that will also get your book out. Networking, you know, I, every one of my clients, every one of my authors, when they go to a networking event, they, they tuck away 10 books into their bags and they take them and give them away. You know, so that's another thing to do. You know, I even have authors that, you know, in the back of their cars, they have boxes of books because they'll meet somebody at Starbucks. And what a great opportunity to get your book out there even more. Telesummits. Use your book as a giveaway for a telesummit that you're going to host or that you're going to participate in. And this, there are many different ways to set this up on the back end through a free opt-in or giving your ebook away. But this is a great opportunity when you're doing telesummits, interviews, things like that to, um, to give your book away and get the word out about your business. Um, also, corporate or business contacts. Um, one of the things I always recommend people do, and this is a great thing for you in the dental practice field, once you're a published author, take a print book, sign it personally, um, put, write a personal message in the book, hand write a letter to the dentist, and then put all of that into a FedEx package. Send it to the dentist. These, when you're sending these things by FedEx, people love to open gifts, right? And you know, the mail, if you're sending something by mail, general mail or through email, it never ends up on his desk or her desk, right? If you send email and say, hey, I've got this great ebook, it's likely that it's going to get deleted, right? Or it's going to go into the spam folder. Everybody always opens a FedEx package, right? And it always ends up on the right desk. So that's how you can really get someone's attention. All right, so let's talk about bestseller campaigns. What makes a bestseller? There are a number of things that make a bestseller. You know, there's a lot of oh, noise and you know attitudes about all of this, but um, what it all boils down to is not actually book sales. It's about there are a number of combinations. It's reviews. Um, number of Amazon verified purchase reviews on the Amazon sales page, the number of downloads in any given period, and it's the time period. So Amazon number one bestsellers, or be, to be a bestseller, actually to be a bestseller, you have to be in the top 100 of a category, okay? So, um, and those, the rankings change every hour. So when we run our promotions, you know, we're, my team is sitting on your Amazon sales page hitting refresh every few minutes to find out when the sales rankings are, are flipping over. So you could be a, a number one bestseller at 12 noon today and by 3 o'clock you could be number 50. So it really is, you know, the time period has a lot to do with it. And category selection is so key, right? So it's also category selection that makes the determination as to whether or not you're a bestseller. All right, profiting from your book. The fact is that, you know, the greatest revenue opportunities are in, are in the services, programs, products related to your book. And we talked about this. Online home study programs, workshops and retreats, 
done for you services, you know, the consulting that you do as well. These are all things and in different ways that you can make more money from your book than the $8 that you're going to make from the sale of your book. So here's a, a few things to show you what some people, some of our authors are making to give you an idea of how people are pricing things. You know, it's, these are definitely will um, help to realize the return on investment that you go through with the publishing process. All right, so five simple ways. I'm going to try and fly through this because I definitely want to get to some stuff um, later in our presentation. Um, five simple ways to write your own book quickly. So the first is to repurpose content that you already have. Many of our authors, we start with blog posts that they have already written, and we try to always repurpose what you might already have. It could be, you know, um, audio recordings that you've got, blog posts, articles that you've written for industry magazines, um, social media posts even. But think about what stuff you've already written that you could reuse again. It could be stuff that you've written in your journal as well, your personal journal. So think about those types of things that you could repurpose. The other thing is surveys and social media posts. Um, many of our authors will throw a survey out to on Facebook or on LinkedIn and say, you know, what are the three things that you are most challenged with in, for example, in your dental practice? That will tell you what you need to write about. A simple way that you can write your book, and some of our authors do this, um, for me this personally doesn't work, but others it, it really does. Record the audio and have it transcribed. Some people talk through things much more easily than they can to sit down and, and type at a computer. So that's another opportunity that you have for easily writing your book. The other is to do an anthology. Um, these are those chapter type books where you have a number of different authors. You, know, you could easily um, partner with you know, five or ten consultants in your industry where each of you takes on a different aspect of practice management. Somebody talks about sales, somebody talks about, uh, writes about HR, um, somebody else writes about um, equipment, things like that. Somebody else writes about purchasing. You know, that's definitely an opportunity that you have. So you don't have to actually write the whole book yourself. You can partner together to do that. Alternatively, you can also hire a ghostwriter. I will be honest with you, I don't recommend ghostwriters because I prefer to have authors write in their own voice. The other thing you should know about ghostwriters, usually the starting rate is around $25,000. So that it can be cost prohibitive, right? Unless you have a friend who's willing to co-write the book with you. But what you need to realize is that to be successful, this does not need to be the great American novel, right? Again, like I said, you're really just looking for something that's about 150 pages or about 130,000 words, right? So think about that, but most importantly, Structure is key. Well, that's, that's one of the most important things, but the most important piece is to write from your heart, right? Write from within, you know, and, and write so that you're talking to somebody, you're explaining to somebody. This is why these case studies and stories, um, the social proof that I talked about earlier is so important. This is what creates the connection between your book and the reader. And this is what builds the, you know, in marketing, we used to call this the know, like, and trust factor. Um, you know, what I like to refer to it as, you know, get to know me, get to know, love me, and then want to work with me. But really, it, it all comes from within. All right, so let's talk about the essential core elements of a lead generation book. And this is how it's different from any other type of book. So. What is a lead generation book anyways? It has a specific strategy and you know what you need to keep in mind is you're really looking at an outcome that is about the number of books in hands versus being um, focused on book sales and creating a bestseller. Yeah, we create bestsellers. You know, I'll tell you, as of right now, every one of my authors in five years of doing this, every single one of them, 
has been an Amazon bestseller and all of them have been in the top 10 when they launch. But that's not why we did this, right? What we do, why we do this is to get your message out to people that you may not be able to reach in other areas of the world or people you may not be able to reach because of um, geography, um, because you're not able to get to every single conference or networking event, because that can be exhausting. It also requires a strategy and a process. You know, like I said, a lead generation book strategy, there's a definite process and a definite structure to it. But most importantly, and this is critical, it requires a solid back end. And I'm going to talk about back end in a second. But the point is, is there's no point if, of doing this, creating a lead generating book, if you don't have an opt-in in place or a compelling offer that's available for the reader to take that next step. So I've boiled it down to six essential elements for a lead generation book. The first is that the book has to offer a transformation. You know, I talked earlier about this, about a reader being able to see themselves in that problem. So a dentist, for example, reading through your book and getting to a case study where you're talking about a client of yours who um, was having a challenge hiring the right uh, receptionist and how you worked with this, this dentist and trained them on how to hire right. And at the end, in your case study, you know, this dentist has, a, has had a, you know, a fantastic receptionist that is building the business for him so that he's able to actually you know, work on, with, uh, with patients and the receptionist is you know, really the face of the business and provides an exceptional um, patient experience so that his business is growing. If someone reading this book reads that, he's saying to himself, oh my gosh, that's a problem that I'm having. I need that help. I need that system. That's the transformation that you're looking to provide. It's also keyword rich because at the end of the day, a book is something that you know, is keyword driven and it, it follows the same on Amazon, um, it follows the same search functionality that typing something into Google would, would um, follow. It also positions you as the expert. So this is your chance to shine and present your system for doing things and show that you are the solution to their problem. It references who your clients are. That's why these case studies are so critical, right? Because you want them to be able to identify. And then ultimately it drives readers to your website so that they can get more and they can get to know you and see what a professional you are. It also includes a compelling call to action. And we're going to talk about calls to action in a second. But the, the key here is to have one that really is in line with what you're trying to convey, right? It makes sense in your market space. So for example, you wouldn't, in your book, if you're marketing to dentists, having a downloadable audio meditation isn't going to make sense, right? Having a downloadable t PDF or a training video might make more sense. All right, so I want to take you through um, a case study here really quickly um, to show you how this kind of call to action and lead generation process works. Now, this is Linda Drevenstedt. We published Linda's book, um, I believe it was very early this year, if not the end of last year. Her book, Life Path by Design, huge bestseller, hugely successful. My team loves work, loved working with Linda, and um, she did such an amazing job on her book when it came to um, creating it in, in a lead generation format, and we helped her work through that. So this is, this is a screenshot of what happens when you get to her book on Amazon. So you see there on the left, it says, look inside, for example. On Amazon, you get the opportunity to look inside all of the books before you buy them. So when you get to her look inside, this is one of the things that you see. We've embedded a video here, and this is Linda saying, hi, my name is Linda Drevenstedt. You can actually, when you're on Amazon, you can click on that video and it will play. Um, and that's the whole part of this lead generation thing. Even if they don't buy the book, 
they can click on on this and still see her video and they can still go to her website at lifepathbydesign.net and download these items that might sound counterintuitive because like some people might prefer that they sell books but really it's all about getting people from the book to your website so that you can then market to them so inside her book she plays this video we play this video and it says my name is Linda this is what my book is about this is what you're going to learn when you read my book and I've also included these fantastic bonus items that you can download here the next thing that happens is as we get into the book in certain chapters Linda has um, she's driving people to her website so this is at the beginning in in the introduction of the book you can see she has this this sentence I provided you with a link to a meditation on my website go get it at lifepathbydesign.net further into the book she talks about an ebook that she's created that you can download and that is further into the book so this is this is another example of really a wonderful way to drive people to opt in and get something from Linda and here's another you know go download your copy of um, life uh, of the value sort so then what happens is when you go to her website you click on those links lifepathbydesign.net you go to her website and now she has her nice book there and on on the right you'll see get your bonus material so then you, you look at that, you click on where it says download now. You enter in your email address and you click on send me the book extras. Then you get this beautiful email from Linda in your inbox. It happens immediately and she's delivering the downloadable ebook as well as everything else that she's offered you within her book. That's a prime example of how this lead generation um, process works with books. That's why I'm saying it's really important to create a solid back end and a solid um, next is a, a lead nurture sequence. So you want to after um, after that first email is delivered, you'll want to then follow up because the gold is in the follow up, right? So what's next? After you deliver the promised material from inside the book, you don't want to leave them hanging. You want to then send them a series of automated emails. And you know, the first is obviously give them their bonuses. The second one is a nice welcome. Thank you for joining my community. I hope you get value from it. A couple of days later, send them a client success story with a, one of your client endorsements attached to it. Um, a couple of days later, send them an article or a blog post that you wrote. And then finally, as a last email a couple of days later, because they've gotten to know you, they, they see that you're consistent, they see that you're professional, they see that people love you in these emails that you've been sending them, the next email is to send them an invitation to, to have a conversation. So Rhonda Renee is one of our authors and she used this process when we launched her book and she actually had one of our highest opt-in rates, 40% um, conversion rate from downloads of, the, of her ebook to getting onto her list. So she had, I want to say, around 800 downloads of her book when we launched her book. And I'm not sure about the math, but I think she had 200 new opt-ins at that point. So she had a huge success with hers. And, and this can happen to you as long as you have the right um, offers within your book. All right, so let's look at some best-in-class lead generation strategies that you can use as well. Things like journals. Journals are something that you can definitely implement into your book. References, um, reference guides, checklists, things like that. Bonus chapters are a big thing. This can be a secret chapter that's not in the book. It could be um, a, a chapter, we call them forgotten chapters, um, secret chapters. It could, in this case, Harvest for Uzgar, we actually gave a free chapter from his next book that he was, he was writing his second book when we launched the first book. So we gave a free chapter for that. 
uh, discovery sessions and webinars. Minette Riordan, she offers um, she offers a free webinar and as well as an e-course. Facets of transformation. We offered for this one a self-assessment, and it's an online assessment that you can take. Downloadable audios. Again, Rhonda. Um, her book was full. Every chapter had downloadable audio meditations. Audio meditations are fantastic for the spiritual area. Um, if you're a certified professional working with um, other types of professionals, really what you're looking for is um, videos. It could be audios as long as they're pertinent, but really um, checklists, PDFs, things like that are good. The book on Facebook marketing by Nick Unsworth. This was huge. Um, the way this, this was structured was every chapter was a different way of um, a different Facebook marketing strategy. And in doing that, um, we had the instructional piece in the front of the chapter. And then we had a recap, which you can see there. We had some bullet points. There was also, at the end of the chapter, resources. There were some resources. And then there was a video that played at the end of every chapter. It was beautiful for the ebook. And then in the print book, we actually just had an opt-in link where people, once they opted in, they got the series of all of the videos. Um, Mayor Flor Toniato, Man Money Manifestations and Miracles. Um, she included a companion workbook as well as an e-course. This has been a hugely successful book for her. And actually, Mariflor informed me um, just about a month ago that it was picked up by a traditional publisher. So we're really, really proud of Mariflor for that. All right, so now what I want to get into is what's going on in the market. So when you're searching for information, I know that we're coming up really close to the end, so try and bear with me a little bit. If we're searching for information, typically we're going to go to Google if we're searching for general information on something. But if we're looking for something that's like real and not, I want to say fake news, <laughs> you know, if you Google something, typically you'll get a whole combination of blog posts and commentary and Facebook and LinkedIn and all kinds of different things that come up in the search results. But if you're looking and you're serious about solving a problem, Typically, people go to Amazon because they want a book. Why do they want a book? Because books are written by experts. So keep that in mind in terms of search functionality as we go through this. So the most popular searches in coaching and consulting today are health, wealth, and love and relationships, right? So if you Google permanent weight loss, you're going to get 1.62 billion hits on Google if you're someone who's looking to have permanent weight loss. So if you're looking to actually lose the weight and you go onto Amazon, you now Google this or um, search on the same thing, permanent weight loss, and you get one in 967. So that's a huge difference. I personally would rather want to be one in 967 than millions. And then if you get into the subcategories, and this is where category selection, when, you, when you're publishing your book, category selection is so key. If you place your book in the health, fitness, and diet, you're one category, you're one in 545. But if you go into general women's diets, you're one in 25, right? Your odds are really good at that point of being noticed and of having, you know, selling more books. How to make money fast. Google it and you're one in 29 million, which actually doesn't surprise me. That is a huge, it, you can see how many people are searching on this, right? If you go to Amazon, you're one in 914. But if you go to personal finance, you're one in 82. So you can see how the um, search functionality is really critical as well as, um, as, well as category selection. Love and relationships, how to find lasting love, one in four million. On Amazon, if you're seeking a mate category, you're one in 34. So let's find out what's going on in, in your market specifically. I did the same exercise on dental practice management. So if you Google how to improve my dental practice business, you get 
if I'm a dentist doing this search on Google, I'm going to get uh, 10 and a half million hits. That's a lot of information to go through. A lot of it's going to be junk. But I, you know, I'm a savvy dentist and I think, you know what, I want to get a book because books are written by experts. So let me go over to Amazon. I do the same search. I'm one in 434 dental practice business. That your odds of, of you know, creating a lead out of a dentist at that point is really good. But let's drill down into that category selection piece, right? If I choose the category now of, you know, um, management and leadership under dental managed practice, dental practice management, I'm now one in 50 books that come up. But if I look at small business and entrepreneurship under dental practice management category, I'm one of 25 books that that dentist is going to find. But I'll take you one step better. If I look at dental practice management, practice management and reimbursement, I'm one in 12 books that that dentist is going to look for. So you can see your odds of, you know, getting found are that much better on Amazon, but again, selecting the right category. Human resources, one in three. So that dentist that I mentioned earlier in the case study that was looking for a receptionist and you know wanting to hire you because you, you're talking about how to hire the right people, you could be one in three books that, that's there. So our, so our goal is to make him choose you. All right, growing a dental practice, one in 3.5 million. However, growing a dental practice, just the general category, growing a dental practice is one in eight. You know, in doing this exercise, I was astounded that there aren't more books out there in your, in your market space. So this just illustrates to you how much a book is needed in your space right? And you have, you all have so much information to give. And I realize I'm just over about two minutes, but you know, if that's the one thing that you take away from this presentation, I just want you to think about that. You can do a ton of webinars, you can do office visits, you can go attend conferences, but how great would it be if you had a book to back that up? You know, think about going to a conference or um, think about even all the cold calls that these dentists get. But if you were to go in or send, you know, your book in a FedEx package to a dentist, you're going to get noticed, right? If you were to go to a conference and hand a prospective dentist your book and say, you know, this is my best-selling book on how to um, hire right, hire the right staff, or run your back office, or how to market your business, you know that's even better than someone who's just handed them a business card because you've elevated yourself to the go-to expert in your field. So I'm not going to run through all the recap. You can replay the, the, um, the webinar if you like. Um, it's a lot of content that we went through. Um, and now, like you said, now you have a bunch of strategies where you can write your own book and you can absolutely do this yourself. Absolutely. People have done it. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want you to think that you can't. So to help you do that, um, I'm just going to run through this really quick. These are people that we've published that have had some really great success. This is Jeff Lawton. The picture you see there is his book signing event that was organized for him in Denver. Huge success, his book, Frontline Leadership, former military man, Nick Ripplinger. Um, he's developed a whole program out of, for um, corporate leadership um, from lessons he learned while in the service. Um, so what I want you to do, if you are looking to do this on your own and you want some help, go to my website at crescendopublishing.com forward slash ADMC. I've set up a special page there to give you our complete publishing blueprint on how to write and publish, publish your own lead generation book in only 90 days or less. Some of you it will take longer, but this should give you the structure to do it if you set your mind to it. So um, I just want to offer you that. Um, 
I don't know that if we have time. Linda, do we have time to take a few questions if people have questions? Do we have any questions, Rick? I don't know. I don't see any in yes, there. Yes, go under go under the questions area, not the chat area. And we have oh, yeah. one question we there. Yep. I'm not seeing it. Maybe could you tell me what the question is? She's saying, how do you help us know what is best to write about? Do you help people oh. create a strategy around what is the best subject for their first Absolutely. book? Absolutely. Actually, somebody, um, somebody that I know had asked me this question. Um, I've had this, the same conversation with somebody from the dental practice management field a few times over the years. And um, yes, absolutely we do. And that's, that's my gold, right? So what I do is I, I have a conversation with you. We just have about 30 minutes of a conversation. We explore it together. And usually after talking to somebody, I can pretty much um, give them a number of ideas and directions to go to. Um, and then it's their choice on what to write about. Now, the benefit that, that I have in, in your organization is that my uncle is actually a dentist. And so I, I know the pains that he has gone through over the years. He's about to retire um, when it comes to building a practice. And um, also, I published dentists before. We, we actually just launched a book um, for a dentist earlier this year. And I'm working with someone else right now that's in this area of practice. So um, the first thing that, that I do um, when I start to work with somebody is I spend a half a day with that person and we map out the entire structure of their book. So, you know, obviously the first thing is, is we want to talk and find out so I can give you some ideas, see if it's a match for us to work together. I can give you some ideas on um, what you might want to write about, give you some time to think about it. Then if we do decide to work together, the first thing that we do is spend a half a day together and map out the entire structure of the book, everything that's going to go in it. We also discuss the um, lead generation, the right lead generation opportunities. And we look at things that you already have. That's another thing that we go into in this VIP strategy session. We look at what you already have so that we can, you know, like I said, repurpose content so that you don't have to start everything from scratch. So I hope that answers the question. But strategy is a big component to what we do. Is there anything else? No, I, I don't see any other questions. Do you, Rick? Nope, you got it covered. Okay. 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 Well, okay, well, that's it then, Robin. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you for your complimentary gift. Anybody who's yes. on this call and anyone who is listening to the replay um, can certainly get hold of it. And I want to thank you so much, Robin. This was a really excellent presentation. I learned so much. I wasn't thinking of writing a book, and I want to write one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, Nancy. Like I said, this is a, you know, a true joy to me to be able to bring this um, presentation to your organization. Um, I know a number of people in the organization. I just, I, like I said, I'm in awe at the work that you do, and um, I'm just, I feel so blessed to to have been able to do this for you. So thank you for organizing this, and thank, thank you, you Rick. Much. Rick, you oh, are amazing. Rick. Yes. Are you guys are most welcome. Thank you, Rick, and thank you everyone for attending. We'll see you next time on our Wednesday evening uh, educational webinar series. Good night, everyone. See you next time.